Hi, my name's Kurt and I'm a Northern California rice grower. I was raised here in Calusa County in a farming family and as far back as I can remember, water has been the number one topic of conversation around here. I'm sure that's the case in most ag communities, but we're in California, which is a giant state with a diverse array of landscapes and environmental interests. Over the past few years, if you were to eavesdrop on one of these conversations about water, you would absolutely hear one word uttered over and over again, sites. We're coming into sites now. It's a large natural basin west of Maxwell. So why is this area a part of water conversations? Because sites here has been flagged as an ideal location for a water storage reservoir. This is a broad topic with a lot of layers, a lot of ins and outs, a lot of interested parties. I'm gonna discuss and analyze the idea of a reservoir here at sites over several segments, potentially over several years. But this is the beginning, a table setter. Where are we and how did we get here? Sites here has been a mainstream topic of conversation for the last few years, but the idea of a reservoir here goes back much further than that. I think sites was originally studied back in the 1950s, as I understand it, and I believe it was the Bureau of Reclamation that was looking at a variety of reservoirs uh, in the North State, and so I think there was some studies that go back into the, the mid-50s. Probably about that time was when you started to have some of the, kind of the environmental consciousness came into California and elsewhere, and so you started to have the laws that, you know, change things. So I think there was kind of a period there where people were thinking that, you know, we shouldn't be building dams or reservoirs. So it never happened. Instead, it became one of those things that was talked about around the coffee shop or while leaning against the back of a pickup. It never got an opportunity to take off, develop, and become a real thing. Until... As one of the worst droughts in the state's history drags on, Californians will decide on Proposition 1. If passed, the measure would authorize more than $7 billion in new bonds to pay for projects ranging from new reservoirs to watershed protection and water recycling. Supporters say the proposition is needed to boost and protect the state's water supply. November of 2014, Proposition 1 hits the ballots. The massive $7 billion water bond shifted the site's reservoir talk from pipe dreams to pipelines. With uh, Proposition 1, uh, with the water bond, uh, the governor, you know, really was the lead campaigner on the bond and his campaign that he was going around the state talking about was saving water for the future. Proposition 1, it's there uh, to save water. And it's, this is a serious, important measure that's not just about storage, which it is, uh, but it's about uh, restoring the habitat. The voters got on board. The measure passed with 67% saying yes. The people that know the, the water uh, side of the equation absolutely knew that Sykes Reservoir was kind of, you know, one of the projects that was right at the top of the list that was being considered during the legislative discussion that led to the water bond. Sykes Reservoir was clearly on everybody's mind and that was the, you know, the reservoir that was talked about. So yeah, Sykes Reservoir was always, I think, kind of seen as why we need uh, Proposition 1, and I think a lot of people supported Proposition 1 because of sites. So clearly a lot of people think a reservoir at sites makes sense, but how would it work, presuming the bond money comes through and sites is constructed? Functionally, it's pretty simple. It's near the Tehama Calusa Canal and the Glen Calusa Irrigation District canals. So that's obviously a big part of this, is being able to utilize those existing canals, which have state-of-the-art fish screens on the Sacramento River, and obviously are operated in a real sophisticated manner to be able to integrate those into a sites reservoir project. If we would have had sites reservoir in 2015 alone, we would have had an additional 410,000 acre feet of water that could have been put into sites just from two storms the December, st big December storm and then the February storm. You know, it sure would have been nice in this kind of a year to help, you know, not only with uh, the fish and the birds, but obviously taking some of the pressure off the farms and helping with some of the needs in other parts of the, the state. So there you go, seems like a no brainer, right? Let's build the thing. It's been a year now since the bond was passed. Surely there's a lot to show for it. Well, maybe not so much in terms of construction, not even a shovel scoop has been pulled out of the basin since November of last year. But a lot is happening. People are getting organized and putting together proposals to acquire some of that bond money to build sites. Organizations have been formed. Organizations like the Sites Joint Powers Authority. They formed in 2010 primarily to advocate 
for the project with the belief that uh, local or regional um, implementation was in, was in the best interest of the valley um, and the state. The two counties uh, that the project resides in and eight water agencies, we're advancing a project alternative and to be the applicant for the Prop 1 grant funds. It is going to be a competitive process and uh, proponents of projects are going to have to bring an application forward uh, to show that in fact there are public benefits, which is what the bond will fund, is the public benefits of a reservoir. The goal at this point is to tap into that bond money and put it towards sites to help get the reservoir built. But what needs to happen to accomplish all of that? And who's the gatekeeper on the bond money anyway? And how do all the people of Northern California feel about how this last year has gone? We'll talk about all of that next time on Building Sites.